Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem. Check if one string swap can make strings equal. And for once we have a problem title that pretty much tells you what the problem is asking of us. So the idea here is that we're given two strings that are guaranteed to be of equal length. So that makes things very easy for us. Suppose we have these two strings. We want to return true if it's possible to make these two strings equal. What we're allowed to do is perform a swap in either of the strings. So in this string, I could perform a swap between two characters. So if I perform the swap between these two characters, then I will basically move uh, the B to be over here and I'll move the K to be over here. And once you have that, you can see that this string is equal to the one above. It spells bank. Now, even though they tell us we could perform the swap in either of the strings, it's not super difficult to realize that if we just performed the swap, let's say in this string, and then we ended up making this equal to the other string. So if I put the B here and the K here, well, we could have done the exact same thing the other way. I could have just performed the swap this way. I could have put K over here and then B over here, if that indeed did make the strings equal. So since it is possible to make these two equal with exactly one swap, we return true. If it's not possible to do that, for example, here you can see we're given a string attack and a string defend. It's not possible. In that case, we return false. We're also told that we don't have to perform a swap. We can perform at most one swap. So suppose we were given two strings like ABC and they're already equal. Well, then we can also return true. So knowing all of that, let's get into the solution. And it's not going to be anything crazy. I'm not really going to go over a brute force solution. Maybe there is one that exists, but I don't think it's actually going to be more simple than the solution I'm going to show you anyway. So I'm not really going to cover that. I mean, I guess conceptually the brute force would be something like this, where, I mean, you try to swap every pair of characters in one of the strings and then just do a comparison to see if that string is equal to the other one. That seems pretty inefficient. First of all, strings are immutable. And second of all, doing a string comparison is going to be of size O of n, where n is the number of characters in the string. OK, but can we do better? I think it's clear that if the two strings are indeed equal or they can be made equal, either they already started equal. I think that's the simple case. So S1 equals S2. That's the very simple case. The other case would be that we do have to perform a swap. If we had to perform a swap, and suppose like this was the swap that we perform, what that tells me is that every other character in both strings was exactly equal. The remaining portion of the strings was exactly equal. It could have been like over here, it could have been over here. Uh, it just happened to be that the swap that we're doing is at the beginning and the end of the string. What I'm saying is that we could have had a much larger string. But anyways, what this tells me is that if there is a swap that we have to perform, there will be exactly two indices or indexes, let's call them i and j, and in this case, this is our i and this is our j. So there will be exactly two positions where the characters are different. And if we can identify all of the differing indexes, and it happens to be that there are indeed exactly two, that can help us solve the problem. But just the fact that there are two differing indexes doesn't necessarily mean that the strings could be made equal. Because, for example, consider this string I have here. I know it's a little bit messy, but imagine if this B instead was like an X and this K over here was a Y or something like that. We can see, okay, this portion is good. This portion is good. They're equal. We have two differing positions here and here. But if we swap them, they are not going to be equal x is not equal to b and y is not equal to k so it's not enough to identify the two positions we also have to kind of cross match them and make sure that they are equal in this example they wouldn't be but now if i go back to the original example we can see that this k is indeed equal to this and this b is equal to this b so for those two positions just to kind of summarize we would want the ith position in the first string to be equal to the jth position in the second string and vice versa. So S1 of J would be equal to S2 of I. If this doesn't make sense right now, it'll probably make sense when I code it up. So that's mainly what we want to do. The way I'm going to code this up is by scanning through with a pointer through the string. We know they're of the same length. That's good. And then I'm going to count 
the number of differing positions and I'm going to collect the indexes into an array. So this way we can solve the problem by iterating over the input a single time. That's going to be a linear time algorithm. You're probably thinking if I have an array, isn't that going to also be linear space? No, it's actually going to be constant space. And I'll show you why in just a second. So let me clean this up. So what I'm going to do is have my loop I in range length of either of the strings. We know they're going to be the same. And outside of that, I'm going to declare an array. Let me call it indexes, which are going to collect those indexes that we were talking about, I and J. What I want to do specifically is check, is the character at I different from the character at I in the other string? If that's the case, I can collect this index and add it to my array. Now, this is how I'm going to get around the fact that this could end up being equal to the input string. We don't want to collect too many indexes. And we already know if the length of that ever ends up being greater than two, that means we have more than two differing positions. Well, at that point, we automatically know that the strings cannot be made equal with exactly one swap or at most one swap. So we can return false in that case. So this is why this is a memory efficient solution. Now, the rest of this isn't too bad, but I think if you're a beginner, you're probably going to end up having a bit more code than I will. Let me show you kind of a concise way to do this. There's two cases at this point that we care about. If the length of indexes is exactly equal to two, then we want to check that cross match. But if that's not the case, if the length is not equal to two, then the only way that we would end up returning true is if uh, the length of indexes is exactly equal to zero. In that case, we would return true. Otherwise, we would return false. You can make this a bit more concise just by saying, well, if this is equal, we're returning true. Otherwise, we return false. Why not just return the result of this condition? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this, get rid of this, and then replace this with that. Now, to handle this case right here, it's not too bad. We know that this is of length two, so I'm going to unpack the two indexes, i and j, from this array. Python makes it pretty easy for us to do that, just like this. And then I want to kind of do like an if statement again. I want to say, okay, string one at index i is equal to string two at index j, and vice versa, s1 at j, s2 at i. If that's the case, I want to return true. Otherwise, I want to return false. Once again, you can see that if this is true, we return true. If it's not, we return false. Why not just return the result of this condition? That's what I'm going to do. So I can get rid of this and then replace that with this. So now you can see that this code is pretty concise. And I would argue that this is pretty readable. I don't think I've made this less readable by making it more concise, but maybe you disagree. Anyways, running it, you can see it's pretty efficient, linear time and constant space. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.